Hey, good morning. Having the worst time with the GoPro camera here. I'm uh, just doing some simple grinding and the thing keeps shutting off. So we'll try it again. Um, the uh, What I'm doing on the cutter grinder is uh, I'm sharpening these uh, hand scrapers. And I just got this one sharpened and the thing wigged out. But uh, so you get a very, very, very sharp. See, it shaves the thumbnail. And uh, this is the little scraper I, I made earlier when I braised the carbide on and stuff. And that's just really nice. But these other ones, like this one here, is really nice for scraping paint in tight areas. And it's dull. See, it won't uh, shave fingernail very well. A little bit, but not very much. So I'm going to put that in here in this V-block. Okay. Now, I... Uh, um, let me get that pretty straight. Okay. I was uh, shown before that um, I oiled up the machine at all the oil points and uh, I worked it back and forth, um, the table here, because you want this to work real smooth. And I don't know if you can see that hand wheel, it'll just spin. And when it gets to that point, you know the machine's really lubricated. And if the machines sit for a long time, they really get sticky and noisy and uh, hard to use. And it's important for this machine to be really well lubricated and uh, the table moves sm uh, smoothly so you avoid that stick-slip situation where you feed it in and it, you know, it just keeps feeding in. So, you uh, really want to only adjust the machine with the spindle running and, and let the vibration settle that out. Uh, the dials only read in thousands. So if you're you know, grinding the sides of a circular cutter, that's two thousandths off its uh, diameter. So to get uh, closer tolerances, and really it'd be working in tenths of a thousandth, you need to put a, an indicator on the movements and watch the indicator for drift and stuff like that. And if you uh, do these things, get the machine well lubricated, it'll make like grinding the flutes on cutters a lot easier, okay? So I got this thing all lubricated and uh, I uh, changed this uh, to the V-block and I had this uh, vise in there and I'll show that a little closer. This is something I found on eBay. I don't know if it's for a tabletop milling machine or something, um, but somebody put this plate on the back of it here. That was already done. And then I put this little nub on here so I could put it in a one inch 5C call it in my work head. Okay, so I switched that out to the uh, Starrett V block, kind of a combination V block. And it's got threaded holes. So I just put a one inch threaded shank on the other side. And you can put the shank on any of these holes for uh, different positions. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and grind this, uh, this um, scraper here. It's not a way scraper, it's just a, like a maintenance scraper for scraping rust and crud and gaskets and all kinds of things. And they work very, very well. I think I have about, I don't know, six or seven of them, different, uh, different sizes. Little short ones like this are real handy. And this little short one here with the, the real narrow piece of carbide is really nice for uh, really tough stuff. So. These are just very useful to me. So I'll go ahead and grind this. Work my way back here. I like to put a little bit of ink on the front here where I'm grinding it back, make sure everything's tight, looks good. Start this thing up. Oh, it sounds good. Look at that. I've got a little bit of a breeze here that will carry this uh, carbide dust away from me and I'm not going to make very much. 
There's got to be a way of that to call my best is very toxic. Okay, he's getting very close here. Oh, yeah. It's out. Yeah, I'm going to bring it back to 5,000. I give it about a thousand set of cards. It seems to be pretty happy doing that. Not quite clean. Just a little bit of a dust in there. I have these machines very, very close, and um, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to spread things out just a little bit more when I get the, that extension going. But anyway, here's uh, this, this one, and it's, oh yeah, it shaves a thumb now. Very, very sharp, and sharp is really good. Okay, so, I'll take a minute here, and you know, the, the, the best things you can do um, with machines, let me take this loose here. Ah, I can do it right here is uh, use them. And uh, I'm going to turn on this old milling machine, and you won't believe how quiet it is. I'll, I'll put it in neutral. I've been using it quite a bit. Okay, fire it up. I need for a chain drive, you know. That's pretty darn quiet. It's just quieted up a whole bunch. I'll put it in gear. Let everything come to a stop, like they say. Okay. There we go. Right there. And lift up on the lever. I don't know, but um, from the first videos, uh, this thing was pretty loud. And it's quieting down a lot. It really helps to run, well, it helps to run your machine. <laughs> That's lots of fun. These old uh, horizontal mills are just great. You know, they're very, <laughs> they're very entertaining. Let's see, what do we got here? It's what are that, uh, that 900. That's actually faster, but this is the fastest here. I think this is 1600 with the um, with the vertical head, but it's 1200 with uh, normally with this spindle. Let's see what it does a full blast. Oh, yeah, that's the right direction. Let's go. Now that's trucking for an old machine. 's on a dime it gives you nine cents change so uh, that's kind of how old machines are is uh, the more you run them the happier they are that old axelson really rattles out there when I started up but you know uh, after running a little bit it quiets up a bit but, you know, machines sit and all the oil drains out of them, and it takes a while to get it back in. And, uh, you know, I was going to say something on these old tool and cutter grinders. Um, I noticed in the manual that uh, the guy uh, that did the plastic molds uh, gave me, uh, he had a note in there, and I think he bought a rebuilt spindle for 1200 bucks from Sopco. 
And I don't know, that was 30 years ago, if they still do that. But uh, 1200 bucks is not a bad deal. I don't know anything about the bearings in those. But the one thing I'll tell you is this old one, you oil them. And the bearings are still good. The ones that have the problems are the later ones where you grease the bearings. That's a problem. So, you know, if you think about, uh, you know, uh, one of these machines made in the 50s or something like that, you know, the grease and the bearings are 70 years old. Okay, um, I just thought I'd point that out about this machine and show a couple things and a real simple grind. And uh, uh, I'm going to keep uh, doing videos uh, of me just using the machine and... Uh, once you start doing simple things on the machine, then the more complex things become easier. And the machine's happier because uh, it's working slicker because you're using it. Okay, that's my tip for today. Use your car grinder. Okay, have a good one.